I'm Dr. Lentz, and today I'm going to guide you through a process of aseptic technique use in the biosafety cabinet, and more broadly, in cell culture work. Now you'll notice we're starting out, I'm already gowned up in personal protective equipment, my PPE. This includes my gloves, my lab coat, as well as eye protection. We also are going to be working in a biosafety cabinet that has already been sterilized or prepared according to the techniques that you would have learned in the previous video relating to that. All right, in aseptic technique, the purpose is to work with biological agents that we need to preserve the sterility of. The goal being, we want those biological agents to grow, perhaps a cell, cell line or cell culture, but we want to prevent contamination from bacteria, fungi, or other biological agents that we aren't interested in, or that might affect or impact our cultures. Today, we're going to be working through the process of splitting cells. For a first step, we need to prepare the materials we're going to use in that process, and that includes the media that we're going to add onto the cells, as well as the cells themselves. Now the media I've got ready to go right here. We're going to now go and collect our cells. So the cells will be stored in an incubator in the room. Um, depending on the room space, your instructor will direct you to the correct incubator. Different cell lines can be maintained in different conditions and in different medias. We aren't going to discuss today or in this video uh, the type of cell lines that you might work with or the medias that you might encounter, but your instructor should direct you to this material, this information. In this case, we'll be working with cells that are present on a 10 centimeter dish. They won't be vis visible in this video, but you'll have to trust that they're present. For this cell line, I'm going to set them into the already prepared hood in order to minimize their exposure to the environment. Now, I'm not going to immediately place the media tube in the hood, and that's for a specific reason. Certain materials that we move into the hood, we need to sterilize before they can be used. This includes plastic, hard plastic tubes and containers, such as our media bottles, our uh, PBS trips and bottles that you might be using other materials such as pipetters or pipette aids. The cell culture we are not going to treat with ethanol because in treating or spraying down that container we risk contaminating or introducing ethanol into our cultures which could be, could be equally damaging as contamination itself. However, we are going to spray down the media. The spray process is pretty generic your goal is to cover the surface of the item. And often, that can be accomplished with a few sprays. I'm also going to transport, in this case, the appropriate rack for this tube. And have sprayed down that rack as well. In this case, either of those items could have carried in a potential contaminant. Now we've placed the media and the cell cultures in the hood and these are the only agents we're going to need for the procedure we'll be performing today. In the case of your particular lab, the instructor may direct you to include more materials or you may need to introduce more materials into the hood. In any of those processes and in all of those processes, to preserve aseptic conditions you want to have those materials ready in advance and move them all into the hood at one point in time, similar to what we've done with our tube and the tube rack. You want to spray them all down with ethanol, and in doing so, you've now prepared a clean container in which you can work with your cells. As we work with our cells, we want to be conscientious that we don't move in and out of the hood too often. We're performing this work in a biosafety cabinet, and the way the biosafety cabinet functions 
the way it preserves an aseptic environment is it filters the air in the tub. The air passes through a HEPA filter and then passes that air in two sheets. One sheet or column going into a grate on the front of the hood and a second sheet of air passing along the back wall of the hood and entering a grate in the back of the hood. Both of those sheets of air act as walls preventing any material from floating or drifting into the sterile space within the hood. We now have those conditions present, so I'm gonna walk you through changing the media on a cell culture plate in this aseptic environment. Now once inside the hood, you want to keep your hands steady and you don't wanna move them in and out. We have our media, our cell culture plate, and we also need a few items present in the hood in order to successfully change the media. We need to have an aspirator, which we will use to draw off the media already present on the plate. We need pasture pipette tips, which we will insert into the aspirator. And this will be the sterile instrument that actually encounters the, the cell culture media. We need a bleach solution that we will use to sterilize the pipette tip once we've finished aspirating. And we also need to be sure that we have a biohazard bag in case we generate any waste that we aren't intending um, in this process. All right, the first step in splitting our cell cultures is to turn on the aspirator. And we should, in doing so, now have a suction that we'll use to draw up the media in our cells. We have our pipette tips ready, and we have our media ready to pipette on. The final step before actually changing the media is to make sure we have the pipettes to replace the new media onto the cells. For that, we're going to use a pipette aid, as well as pipette tips. Now, in grabbing or acquiring a pipette tip, this is the one instance in which you'll probably find yourself leaving the hood, grabbing the appropriate pipette tip, and resuming work in the hood. Try to minimize the frequency of grabbing pipette tips, but that probably will be an item that you need to acquire throughout the process. I'm going to begin splitting the cells by first opening my pasture pipette to have it ready to go. I'll then take the aspirator, place a new aspirator tip, this now being a sterile instrument. I'll then briefly remove the top of the plate, exposing the culture media, and with one hand, steadily tilt the media so that it collects on one side of the plate. I then introduce the pipette, which draws the media up. Remove the pipette. Quickly replace the lid. Treat the pasture pipette tip with bleach. And now remove this tip and set it to the side for disposal. This process in this process, we need to be timely. So I will quickly acquire my pipette, place it into the pipette aid, replace the media. In this case, I'm using a volume of approximately eight mils. I'll then briefly remove the lid of the plate Holding it steady with one hand, provide the media to the wall of the container, slowly, so that the media does not rush in and disrupt the cell culture. Then quickly replacing the lid of the plate. I then, with the used pipette, rewrap it in the container um, it came out of and remove that from the pipette aid and set it to the side for disposal. The pipette aid, I can return to its rack. 
a few points that I'd like to um, highlight in this process that are important for aseptic technique. Anytime you move in and out of your plate, you want to be very brief in removing the lid of the container of the cells, and you want to handle it with a steady grip so that you don't lose control of that plate and perhaps spill some media. Once the media has been changed, our cell cultures can now be carried back to the incubator and we can afterwards return and clean the hood for the next user. In our final step of preserving an aseptic condition in our hood, we're going to spray down the surface on which we were working with Decon. This is a cleaning solution meant for inactivation of biological agents. You'll find spray bottles of Decon that look very similar to the ethanol distributed throughout the lab space. Spray a thin layer of Decon solution on the surface at which you worked. And wipe that surface with a paper towel. In wiping up the decon solution, we've now terminated or destroyed any biological agents on the surface in which we were working, and we won't leave any decon residue on other surfaces. Lastly, we want to spray down the hood again with ethanol and wipe up the ethanol. The purpose of this is to help remove any residual decon um, agent, as well as provide one last decontamination step prior to closing the hood. The paper towel that you've used to clean up the hood should be disposed of in the biohazardous waste. and you have now com completed the process. You can close the hood, turn off the light and the blower for the next user.